we're still talking about how to solve multi-step problems and we're going to talk about how to set up problems in this lesson 4c if you've missed or skipped previous videos you may become lost or confused so just check the description for the links some of the GED math test problems will ask you to recognize the correct equation not to solve the problem knowing your order of operations is extremely important for these we'll need to think about what steps are needed to solve the problem then be able to put those steps into an equation so as we talked about in the last couple of videos we're doing PEMDAS that's the order of operations it's parentheses first followed by exponents then we multiply or divide going left to right whichever comes first and then add or subtract left to right whichever comes first all right so here's our first problem it says Jade makes fifteen dollars per hour as a receptionist on weekdays and she makes twelve dollars per hour as a sales clerk on Saturdays if she works 35 hours as a receptionist and six hours as a sales clerk how much will she earn for the week so we actually have two separate problems here so it's a multi-step problem the first thing we have to pay attention to is that she makes fifteen dollars per hour as a receptionist and she did 35 hours at that see that then we see she makes twelve dollars per hour as a sales clerk and she did only six hours of that so the first thing we need to do is recognize how to write the fifteen dollars per hour for 35 hours as an equation and then the twelve dollars per hour for six hours and put them together to get a big huge total right a grand total so here's our choices should we add the 15 plus the 12 dollars should we multiply the 15 times the 35 hours and that'll give us the answer for the whole problem should we multiply 12 times 6 the 12 dollars per hour times the 6 hours or should we multiply the 15 dollars times the 35 hours and then add the 12 dollars times the 6 hours or should we add the 15 and the 35 hours and the $12 an hour and the 6 hours and then multiply them? So we have to think. We need to find out how to get the amount of each separately. So we have to look at this as two separate problems. That's where parentheses can help us. So we know because we have two separate problems, the $15 per hour at 35 hours is the first one and the $12 per hour at six hours is the second one we know it's not going to be one two or three it's going to be one of these two bottom ones here it's going to be four or five fifteen dollars per hour as the receptionist for 35 hours added to the twelve dollars per hour sales clerk for six hours so actually this is the correct answer what we would do is multiply the 35 hours times the fifteen dollars per hour and get a product set it aside then do the twelve dollars per hour times the six hours and get a product and then we would add those two products together and that would solve this problem okay all right let's try another one we can use parentheses to separate different steps of a problem so if you can see that there's a couple of different steps or even three or more steps use parentheses okay so Jade earned that fifteen dollars per hour we know that and she worked seven hours each day for three days how much did she earn altogether so which one of these would be the correct equation to find the answer to what they're asking fifteen dollars per hour seven hours each day for three days which one of these would you choose would we do the fifteen dollars per hour times seven hour and then add a three for the three days would we add the seven plus three and multiply it by the fifteen dollars per hour would we multiply the seven times three and then add fifteen dollars or would we do the fifteen plus seven and then add three or how about this one fifteen dollars per hour times seven times three well this is the actual correct answer right here we need to find her earnings for one day that would be the fifteen dollars times the seven hours and then find her earnings for three days once we had found how much she made in one day we can multiply it by the three days she worked 
We can also imagine this as repeated addition. $15 times 7 hours of working one day and doing it again for the second day and doing it again for the third day and then just adding up those days. We have 3 times 15 times 7. See? So we have 3 times 15 times 7. And it doesn't matter if the, it's back here or this 3 is in the front. 3 times 15 times 7. It doesn't matter the order, right? doesn't matter how we multiply the order. So multiplication is just repeated addition. So remember that 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 15 is the same as 3 times 5 equals 15. All right. So we could have done 15 times 21 even, and that would have worked out because 7 and 7 and 7 is 21. 3 times 7 is 21. All right. So we're going to get into more problems like this throughout the playlist, so stick with me, okay? So now here's something that if you're a regular viewer of mine, you've heard many times, and if you're new, well, you're gonna hear it today and many more times in the future. Fractions are little division problems. We're gonna talk more about fractions in lesson five. That's only a couple videos away. We're almost at lesson five. If we have seven plus three, and we have a fraction bar and then a 2 underneath it. This is the numerator. That's the denominator. We basically have 10 over 2. This is 10 halves. And we know that we can simplify this because the numerator is so big. It's an improper fraction. What we do is say, how many times can 2 fit into 10? 5. It's 10 divided by 2. So whenever you see this fraction bar, think of division, okay? So Lisa, Jade, and Emma shared an Uber, and the total for the ride was $21.30 plus a $4.50 tip. Now, if they split the cost evenly, how much should each pay? So the ride was $21.30 plus a $4.50 tip. Would it be this one, two, three, four, or five? Not enough information given. And they split this ride... It said, how much should each pay? This word each is telling me that it's division. So we know it's not this one. It's not this one. It's going to be one of these. All right. We look at the $21.30 and the $4.50 tip. Well, if they're splitting a total, we need to total these two, don't we? We need to add these two amounts together. So anything that would have these two amounts added together and then split for each of them, and there's one, two, three people, would be the correct one. So if you said this one, you're right. You add the $21.30 plus the tip of $4.50, and whatever that total is, we would divide it by three, because there's three of them, one, two, three, and that's how much each would pay. There's three people splitting the total cost. We're going to divide it by three. But see, we have to remember to add the ride plus the tip together before we divide it by three so they split the tip also, okay? So you should now be ready to do this GED skill focus on page 63, all right? If you have any trouble when you're doing it and you don't understand anything, go back. Go back and retrace your steps and try to fill in, all right? The next video is order of operations on a calculator. It's lesson 4D. Then after this video, we're going to get into lesson 5 in fractions. If you need more help, I've always got links in the description of the lesson video. So if you look in this description, you're going to see uh, grade 3, 4, 5, 6, and some GED math videos that we've already done in this playlist that can help you. These are very, very helpful, all right? The lower the grade level, the easier it's explained. So if you're totally confused, start here. If you're only a little bit confused, start here, all right? But all of these will help you. There's something to learn in every single one of these, and it kind of helps to hear me repeat myself. If you watch videos where I'm constantly saying the same thing over and over again, like whole numbers are counting numbers, no fractions and decimals allowed, you're going to get to a point where you're going to say, okay, I know what whole numbers are. You don't have to tell me again. I got it, okay? So that's why I repeat myself.
because I want you to remember without having to write it down a million times or whatever. All right, so let's see how we can do order of operations on a calculator, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you there. Bye.